Hello and welcome to my first ever tutorial in the Let's Create series. Uh, sorry, not Let's Create, Let's Learn. Jeez, I really should learn about that. So anyway, uh, so in this tutorial we're going to be going over um, how to override the mouse events that the Q widget class provides in order to move around a frameless window. And I know that there are documentation on this and I still had a little bit of a an iffy time getting this to work smoothly and so I kind of just uh, spend about 10 minutes getting this to work by myself and I found that uh, I could do it quite nicely uh, the, this way that I did it, this method. So anyway, so uh, if you want to watch uh, more about what this channel is going to become, if it all goes to plan, uh, I'll post up another video probably tomorrow or something or the day after and that'll be about what my kind of plans are for uh, a bit wise guy. Uh, channel which will basically you know hopefully maybe if you want to subscribe to that or you don't want to subscribe uh, hopefully that video will kind of sway you in either direction and that's fine so let's get straight into this tutorial because no one really likes listening to really drawn out tutorials so I actually already started this I already did um, one of this but I thought it was so messy that uh, I would just start it again and plus I've already got this all written out and so I'll go through every single line that I've written out but at least I'm not going to make any typos, so if you just want to steal this, then that's fine. And you can just write it out. So, but what I will do is, I'll do so. Uh, I'm going to explain so, something to you before we actually go into uh, overriding the methods uh, in the QWidget class to do with uh, the mouse press event, mouse release event, and finally the mouse move event. So, if I run this and save this from last time... Uh, Oh, yeah, don't know how I missed that, it's been a long day, it's been a long day. Okay, so, sorry about that. So you can see here that we've got a widget window, um, which is just a Q widget, and around this we have a frame right here, and clicking on the frame allows me to, uh, sorry, Clicking on the frame allows me to drag it around, and that is the most annoying thing in Windows. I, I thoroughly despise that. Anyway, so <laughs> we get a close button. We all know what they used to do. Um, so you're thinking to yourself. So, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, I have an application, and I want to get rid of that because it's kind of messy, and it's kind of UI specific. It's kind of a OS specific what the frame around a window looks like, and quite frankly, I could do it better. Well. I've kind of had those thoughts a few times. Maybe it's worked out sometimes, but sometimes it's better to just leave it. But let's just say you want to try and do your own graphic design for your, uh, for your application and all the more power to you. And so you think to yourself, wow, well, I've moved the, I'm going to remove the uh, frame, but hold on a second, I can't actually move this around the screen anymore because I need this frame. So you know, so you'll notice that if I click inside of here, I can't actually move it around. And that's, so that's what we're going to achieve with this, hopefully. And so the first thing I'm going to do is, if you haven't already figured out how to remove the frame, uh, all it takes is a simple QT uh, frameless window uh, hint flag, uh, which just goes after the Q widget parent up here. Um, I'm not going to explain what all this does, because that will be for a different tutorial, but if you didn't figure out that that goes there, then stick that right in there and hit enter. Tab, whatever the hell your autocomplete finishes with. So... That's all good and well. So the next thing we need to do is actually just head over to the header, and we've got a few things. We've got include Q widget, which just includes our Q widget class for this, so we can inherit the Q widget. And if you know anything about inheritance, then you'll understand that uh, we're just overriding um, some virtual methods that are given to us in the Q widget class, which are basically uh, just some really useful functionality to play around with. I could be wrong when I say that, so any comments that like correct me because there's always pe people better, and I'm still learning. Um, so if anyone wants to drop any comments in below uh, about something I've said that's wrong, please do, um, and I'll remake that. I'll say the next video uh, what I've said wrong. Anyway, so this isn't about classes and everything else like that. This is about overriding these specific three things here. So what we're gonna do is if I just uh, get rid of this because I just want to write this out again. Um, we're going to type in the protected keyword 
which puts that into a protected part of our class. And we're just going to override the following three, and I'll explain what each one does because I'm sure about these. So last time I actually did this, uh, my IntelliSense went crazy on me and didn't work. And so I was kind of like, oh, wait, what is that? But anyway, so we have three things we need to override. And the first one is the mouse move event. And we're going to pass a parameter in and we're going to call it event, but really you could call that whatever you want. It doesn't matter, to be honest. Uh, we're going to override the mouse press event. And again, we're going to call, we're going to give it a parameter of event. And we'll need this later because we need to handle... Uh, certain things and lastly we need a mouse release event because otherwise we'll have we'll be stuck in an eternity of mouse down and we don't want to be stuck in that eternity because that's a bad eternity to be stuck in can you imagine just having your mouse down forever uh, while your application's running this is bad so the final thing the final thing that we need is uh, just a boolean uh, value of uh, is mouse down equals false now I will give a heated warning. Uh, if you're not running Qt 501 with the newest MinGW or um, CMake compiler or another C++ 11 uh, enabled compiler, you will not be able to initialize the same way that I have where I've said bool is mouse down equals false because that is a static, uh, that is non-static initialization, sorry. If you'll see here, we get non-static data member initializes is only available in C++11 uh, and GNU C++11 which is just two different um, versions of the compiler and in Qt501 which is why I'm running right about now uh, about Qt Creator uh, it has the latest compiler with C++11 automatically enabled for me so that's really useful and I really like uh, the new features of C++11 they make Things just that little bit easier, and they've also got a lot better support for Lambda, which is really, really good um, for doing really quick mathematic, complex mathematical things, uh, such as calculus and stuff. So we've got Lambda calculus and whatever else, uh, smack bang straight into there. So we've got all this set up, and hopefully I've left this open long enough for you to write all this out. And all we need to do is just uh, create these three things in here which will allow us to override and handle uh, each event as they happen. So first thing we need to do is we actually understand that this is a, this is this event pointer is a Q mouse points to a Q mouse event. Uh, and this class provides us some pretty nifty functionality that we're actually going to take uh, somewhat full advantage of. And so the first thing we need to do is we're actually just going to say if uh, event dot button uh, is equal to qt uh, whoops left button so what we're saying here is if our event is sorry if event uh, which is our q mouse event uh, and the function is going to return um, either Q left, Q up, Q down, all that kind of good stuff, QT, sorry. Uh, if it is equal and returns a value of QT left button, which is the um, left button on our mouse, then we just want to perform something uh, if that statement is true. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to set is mouse, and if I could spell that, it'd be really helpful, uh, equal to true. Cool. So that's all we need to do for this one. Now, all we need to do in here is literally, um, sorry, in here, all we need to do is actually just say is mouse down uh, is equal to false. So what we've said here is that is the mouse down uh, yes, okay, set is mouse down to equal true. If it's not, well, we're going to release the mouse event. Um, and we're going to set our boolean value to false. So final thing we actually just need to do is we need to move the form around, but we're first just going to compile this and make sure that we've got all this uh, goodies going. And yes, we do. And you notice that the form still doesn't move, and that's perfectly normal because, well, we haven't moved it anywhere. So what we need to do is we finally need to get some stuff. 
So we need to say if mouse or is mouse down is equal to true. And you could just say if mouse is down, but is mouse down, but I always explicitly say uh, what I mean. Event dot global pause. And we need to get, we need to set something. So actually we made a cue point and if we go back to here, you can see that under our protected um, things, we've got a mouse point. So we need to actually uh, use that mouse point. And if I made a space there, we could get access to that. So we're gonna set the uh, mouse point equal to event global position. So this basically means that wherever our mouse event is, uh, so wherever our mouse is currently on the screen, when this statement is true, uh, we're going to pass that into the um, var into the variable mouse point, which is a cue point which takes uh, an x and a y value. So finally, what we need to do is we actually just need to we need to move the form around. And so what we're going to say is just move, uh, and we're going to say mouse point. All right, now let's run this, and we should be able to move the form from the top left-hand corner. So, that's cool. So we can move the form around now, and um, it's all fine and dandy. Now, what I'll show in the next video is, that's kind of obnoxious, uh, in my opinion. If I click there, and my form drops to the top left corner, uh, and that's, that's what's meant to happen according to the code that we have here. Uh, but what I'll show in the next video is how to offset the um, position of the mouse but I think that gives you a pretty good idea and I'm sure that if you do a little bit of tinkering you'll actually be able to figure out how to offset that yourself. Anyway I hope you guys got something out of this video. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. Don't be like oh that's nice because I put up a video. If it's shit then say it's shit. If you got something out of it and it actually helped you then say so because uh, it makes me want to make more videos. Um, of equal quality and even better quality you know I, I think about how I'm gonna make these tutorials better every time so without any further ado um, yeah thanks guys and just um, keep checking out my channel because I'll keep cr um, creating these series of like let's create and um, let's learn and all that stuff so have a good one see ya peace